Okay. Uh, so the, uh, the, the talk, which really is a discussion, so I'm just going to be talking for a few minutes. And hopefully we'll all be talking after this, like the previous session. So the talk is, uh, what is your question quotient? Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll cover what that is later. Uh, the subtitle is Cargo Cult Innovation and the Indigenous Spark. That's just a hook, really. Okay, so if you ask me what that is later on, I'll answer that. Um, <coughs> so um, about me, so my name is Thomas Tan. So I've, uh, I've, I've been a software engineer, a product manager, and I've worked in large and small companies. And um, so I'm trying to decide what I'm, I'm going to do next as a career, career move. But that's not related to, that's just about me. So thanks for voting for this talk. And it's really a half-baked talk. So before we get started, yeah, that's as in the spirit of bar camp. So can everyone look at the person next to you and just ask a question, any question, right, in anything, about anything, in any way you like. Just do that. Come on, come on. This is about asking questions. Any, just one question about anything. Are you chatting or are you asking questions? Okay. How many, how many people asked one question? How many people asked two questions? At least two questions. At least, so some people didn't ask questions. <laughs> but anyway, the point of this is so that you, know, you feel a bit embarrassed, a bit afraid. Yeah? Because it's like you're asking questions. You know, most of the time we make assertions. You know, we say that either this, this, this or that. If I were to listen to you giving a talk, I'd be, I'd be judging in some way you know, as well. Right? But I'm trying to change that. And, and the reason is, okay, why am I talking about this? Why am I interested in this? So in recently, I overheard, uh, I was attending a panel, and the executives were, were saying a lot of very interesting things. But one of the things that they were saying was that you know, Singaporeans are not as good at asking questions. In the offices, you know, during work, you know, you'll be told to do something, and so on and so forth. There will be no questions. Right? And then you might get issues. Right? I think that's where they're coming from. And also overheard, actually overread, is uh, the country manager of a major tech company in Singapore recently said that you know, she, she couldn't find people who could solve problems, think critically, uh, uh, or being able to communicate. And I, I think of all this as connected to asking questions. Communication, critical thinking. Right? It's in the pipeline to innovation. So, so as, a, as a problem solver, I'm, I'm thinking, I want to solve this problem. Because the first time I heard this was eight years ago. So I've been, I've been in the tech community for, for the last eight years, and I've been attending lots of talks, you know, tech people, investors, mentors from overseas, they come. And I, and I keep hearing this, you know, if you don't ask enough questions, why is that? So, so I decided to, to think about how can we change that, right? What can we do? So the idea that I had is something called a question quotient. It's kind of like IQ, intelligence quotient, yeah? Or EQ, empathy, emotional quotient. So what if there was a question quotient? So what is your question quotient, right? So think about that. So that's one way of looking at it. And um, then, uh, then there'll be questions, right? This is where it gets fuzzy. So, so it's a metric or a score. And then once we have that, you can measure it and you can improve it. You can track it, right? And, um, and the question is, how do you assess it? So that's where I want to find out what are your ideas. How does one assess question quotient? So, the end point, where's the end point? The end point could be that in the future, if uh, I were to hire somebody, I can ask the person, what's, the question, what's your question quotient? Yeah? Instead of, it could even be like, you know, I could, in the job ad, I would see something like, uh, today, you would see something like uh, 15 years of management required, uh, four years of programming, so and so, three years of HR, you know, recruiting, 20 years of asking questions. <laughs> something like that, yeah? So how do you measure that? That doesn't really make sense. What kind of answers make sense to that question? Or, or even simplistically, you can have in the interview say, today you do a technical test, right? Or you could have a question quotient test. It could be, it'd be as easy as uh, I'll take today's newspaper, an article like this, I'll give you a few minutes to read, come up with 10 intelligent questions about that. In any aspect, no, no matter how deep, look, look between the lines, what are they saying? Is there an agenda? Blah, 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 right? Come up with 10 questions like in, in a span of, say, five minutes. So that could be one way, right? Or it could be like an IQ way, where there's a standard test. 
you just go through that. You know, some of them are trick questions. It could be multiple choice. <coughs> and um, to take this to its, uh, what I can imagine, given the two days of thinking. So it's perhaps individuals and even organizations have question quotients. So if you want to work for a company that is innovative, today there is no innovative score. And it's a fuzzy concept anyway. Many companies can be innovative, but they won't survive two years, right? And it doesn't tell you what kind of company it is. So maybe a company can have a question quotient. And if the company is scoring 187, it's better than one that's scoring 150. Because you know that when you go there, they encourage you to ask questions, right? They won't slam you down. It's very safe. You know, they encourage questions and innovation. So then it's a better place to work for and work at. It helps you to grow, they grow, the bosses all the way down are like that. So maybe Google is like that because their mission statement is about, you know, you bring the questions, we give you the answers or something like that, right? That's what they say. So, so and, then, and, and then you know about Glassdoor, LinkedIn and all of that, right? You can rate companies, the interview process, you know, what do they like, how many stars? So maybe you can rate companies question quotient. So anyone, anywhere that you've worked at, when you leave or when you're still there, you can say, you know, this place is really good. You know, I'll give it a X score, right? And then, you know, a lot of people want to work for these companies instead of somewhere where they, they don't want to. But, but maybe there are also jobs that you don't want too many questions. So that could be bad, right? In the military, you don't want many questions, really. You know, you're commanding like 100 people in a, in a company or whatever. You know, when you say go, you don't want too many questions, right? So it doesn't work that way. But at a high level, maybe you do, right, in the military. So, so and also there are different ways of thinking about this. So let's start small. Um, what does the QQ score, the question coaching score, mean at the primary school level? So you have to start somewhere, right? So by primary six, what would you expect a child to be able to ask? You know, because frequently, because I've got a niece and nephew, and I, I see that, you know, now they are, they, now they are in late teens, 16 years old, they don't ask any questions. They talk, they make assertions, you know, and, and I get disappointed because only when you ask questions, you're actually absorbing, right? And you can't, you can't tell them something or give them advice when they don't ask for it. They just won't listen to it, right? But if they start asking, then they might absorb something. So the key is to get them to ask questions, to get into that habit. So what does it mean for a QQ score at the primary school level? the secondary school level, or even higher? Same. Let's start with the number of questions asked. I mean, uh, that's the easiest. Quantity. Quantity. Yes. Uh, although uh, I've seen that break down in very, very bad ways in a higher learning uh, environment. But let's go on. Yeah. Give, can you give an example of a very bad way? What does that mean? OK, um, I will not name names, but uh, I have uh, heard of a class that was um, that, that kind of like based part of your class participation score on how often you ask questions. And it turned out that people were asking unintelligent questions, to put it very mildly. And, uh, yeah. Could it be that because they haven't asked 10,000 questions before they reached that point, uh, right? No, not true. Uh, but rather they were asking questions for the sake of asking questions, which I believe was against the uh, spirit of why uh, such, a, such, such a rule or... Was it a negative? It, yeah, overall, I, from what I heard from, because this is a sec this is a secondhand uh, story, uh -huh. so uh, from the person I heard it, who I've heard it from, uh, he did say that it didn't quite work out very well. It was slightly <coughs> disruptive for the class. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That, that I I would say, let me get back. To, okay, so so questions and innovation is connected. Uh, in, in, in many countries, they, they talk about innovation as the idea stage, and then you produce, right? Make, you know. But I think before that, there are actually three, three uh, stages. You have the critical thinking stage, the questioning stage, and the communication stage. So you have to have be able to talk a lot, even rubbish. Then you start asking a lot of questions, rubbish questions, right? Eventually, you get good. Right? It's like the, what the, uh, one of the Nobel Prize winners said. You know, with, you know, it's hard, he was asked, how do you get good ideas? I get good ideas by having lots of ideas. So, right, so, so how do you get good questions? There's only one way to get good questions. You ask a lot of questions, right? And uh, Sorry, oh, I think it's more than just asking questions. It's also about answers that the questions get. So if you're a kid and you ask like, a whole bunch of questions, but <coughs> your, say whoever your caretakers are un unable to ask you questions or you just dismiss the questions, then it's also like, discouraging to ask questions. Yes, it is. Yes, but you shouldn't stop, I think. Because uh, why would you? Why should you stop? So, so and you you, won't, you can only get better. I would, in, in my mind, given a, a anyone who is, 
at least average intelligence, not everyone in this room, right? A task to repeat over and over again, they will get good. They I will. The, this, this notion of uh, having 10,000 hours of practice and all that, uh, it's a bit of a, what, what people often miss out is the part where it's, it has to be deliberate practice with feedback and all that. So I think going back to his point, if the question is just asked without any uh, thought or effort to improve, then it may not work out, you know, even though there might be lots of practice. I agree. I, I agree. Yes, you have to. Um, but I think once, once, once it becomes, once there's a question epidemic, yeah, then, then maybe there will be some solution. Because right now there isn't a question epidemic, you know, and, and, and in fact there's a desert in Singapore, I would say, a desert of questions. So, so, um, so right now that's... Not, not asking questions at all is probably worse than asking yeah. questions. I, yeah, you're right. I think right now we're at the other end of the spectrum. We need to be, we, maybe we should take extreme measures so that we can get somewhere in the average in the long term, you know. Singapore is very uh, like reductionist in nature, so you have to take something that's very complex, like a human being, and kind of like reduce it to a bunch of uh, scores. And the moment you reduce it to a bunch of scores, like a PSLE score or whatever score, an IQ score, uh, you kind of create this space of good performance. But then you also uh, must create a space of bad performance. And so you know we kind of start optimizing for this. We have real college industries coming to game the system, and not like massively keen on yet another score for people to optimize. Uh, sometimes I think we are looking at uh, an engineering process kind of approach to solve a people culture kind of problem. And I think it's not so much a term for questions, but a term for being able to willing to like look stupid and find friends. You know, the, the best questions like uh, that I see you know like get marks in like a, a school is like you know a nice a technical well formed question that you can all oh, point to. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. But sometimes just like you know I don't understand can repeat that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I agree. When I when I thought about this score, it, it's like you know you can gain the system and all of that. But what would be the? I think for this QQ score, the the effect and the result is different from the other sort of assessments because it builds something that is inside you. If I were to give you a newspaper article and within five minutes ask you to come up with ten intelligent questions and, and I have assessed fifty people, I will know, you know, whether you you can't gain the system because. If you can answer correctly given a real-time test, like it means that you are able to ask questions, you know, good questions. You can't game it. This is like uh, asking you to do math. If you ask me to do math today, I can't game it. <laughs> I can memorize the questions, and if the right questions come out, I will do it, and then I can get perfect score, right? But if uh, problem-solving-wise, I can't do it, you know. So. But then again, right? Let's say you have the, art, um, the newspaper article, and then you ask people question, uh, ask people to ask questions. But then, uh, then you need to come up with like a rubrics of what exactly is in that intelligent questions. Mm -hmm. But intelligent questions to everyone, it's subjective. Yes. Like whatever I ask might be intelligent to myself, but may not be intelligent to you. That is the beauty of it. Yes. So you, how, how you, you can't game it. Yeah, so how are you going to come up with a collective score? Exactly. See, yeah. this, if we think like that, we will end up in the situation you described. Yes. But I don't think you can game this system. It, that, when it comes to questions, there's something about it that you just can't game. And you, it's like success, you know, when they say about success, you don't know what it is, but when you see someone that's successful, you know that person is successful. You can't fake it. Right, so a, a person who can ask intelligent questions, <laughs> well, you can't take it for a long time with everybody, I yes. think, or maybe you can, yeah. Maybe, you, can, yeah. You, know, you, you might be successful, maybe uh, materially, or, or yeah. appear to be successful materially, but you might be seriously in debt. <laughs> oh, no, the kind of success that I'm talking about is you can't game it, you know. You would, I, I don't think you can, you know, you're talking about like real, authentic, successful yeah, people no, and fake ones, you're talking about fake ones. <laughs> success can be faked. Yeah. Uh, could I just pick up on what yeah. you made? So um, uh, I think uh, what again uh, may not be so helpful is to like uh, go around the, the definition route. If that's all thing about what the definition of the question is, yeah. maybe it's more a case of uh, us just being able to live with the reality that there are many uh, 
equally valid notions of uh, depression and equally valid notions of success and just allowing a greater you know, amount of choice that, yeah, that's a good question, that's also a good question, that's successful, that's also successful, and, you know, not go down the road or barreling down, let's all try to define I think that's a great idea to start because I know eventually it will evolve into standards, and that is where we want to be. Eventually, everything evolved into kind of standards. You have different companies asking for different skills, and they have different hiring criteria. Eventually, you have a different hiring criteria. So it is, it is a way of measuring. It shouldn't be the only way of measuring, right? So that's what I'm, I'm thinking. And just now, you, you made something a very important point, which is, it's not about asking questions. It's about being able to look stupid. Yeah. yeah, okay, let me cover that. Because, okay, how do you make someone able to look stupid? How do you, you can't. You have to track them. You can't ask them, to. okay, how many times do you look stupid today or this year? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's one way. But let's say you have this score, right? By having a higher score or a good score, it means that you have looked stupid enough times. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, uh, um, let me see. Communication, uh, question, critical thinking, ideas. So this is this is what I think of the innovation pipeline. There are business innovation pipelines, <coughs> but they all talk about this, the funnel. You have a ton of ideas, you screen them and you process them, eventually you get one winning innovation. Right? But they start here. So my my view is that there are actually three cultural things that Silicon Valley has, you know, some places in the world have, Israel has, we don't have. This is what I call the cargo cult innovation culture, yeah? You don't have this. You're not going to have this. Now then you can say why China can make it work. A billion people, you throw a rock, someone has an idea. <laughs> enough ideas, enough innovations, right? So to have ideas and to be able to ask questions, you need to do critical thinking. To, to have that, you need to be able to ask questions, right? You, you need to be able to not accept the status quo or accept just whatever I say. You question me, right? Then you get 10 more ideas out of that. And then once to have that, you need to be able to communicate, right? And all of this, if you succeed at doing that, that means you succeeded at being stupid enough times, right? And this is just one score that you can measure. But guaranteeing that you can measure something here, you're guaranteeing that that guy has done enough of this and maybe we generate another this and then we get to that point. So that's, that's kind of what I mean. So the indigenous spark is what Singaporeans need to have to have this, right? So uh, th that's kind of like, this is not really the, the focus of the questions, but that's, that's where I, I, my thinking went as well and I had to cut it out so that's not to make it too confusing. Okay. Oh, I just have something to share. Uh, uh, one of the ways to increase the... Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, we so need to film you. <laughs> it's, okay. it's purposely I don't want to film myself, that's the thing. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry for everyone else, not mine. Okay. Uh, one of the ways to increase the quality of questions and the increase of quality of answers, just so they know, sometimes for our century, for our lifetimes, we may, not able, we may ask good questions, but we may not be able to get good answers, all the answers that we get in our lifetime. <coughs> but the good questions we can increase. One of the way that ancient Chinese do, especially the emperors and the prince, right? They study history. So what happens is that they take the history context of that one. It's not like the Singapore study history when they ask remember by no. So at certain incidents, they will ask the teachers, will ask the prince or the future king, close the book, ask at this point of time, what will you do? Then after that, then open up the book, then the teacher will share his decisions making and discuss with the, the, the student's point of view and what actually happens and the pros and cons. And over that period of times, when the kings, uh, when the prince or the students, they become decisions makers, they apply that and they ask questions and then they pass it on for them. So these are the, the, the so-called top secrets of the Chinese ways of uh, learning from history to ask good questions. Like. So is the history book uh, like a model answer in a way? Or? No, it's that. Or it's just scenario, loose scenario scenarios. Planning. It's like your MBA, that kind of scenario planning. I see. But because okay, history, you cannot apply directly, yeah, yeah. you are being forced to uh, adapt and then to change. See, this is being done at the MBA level, like you say, or higher <laughs> education level. But by the time we get there, we have lost 
you know, by the time you get there and you ask someone, have you asked 20 years worth of questions? They say no, right? <laughs> so you can't really, you know, you have to ask 20 years more, more questions. But the guys who have done that, when they walk into the room, you know. You know, when they walk into the room, you know that they have been asking questions all their lives, communicating all their lives. You can see the spark, right? And that's what I think. It's an opinion, it may not be true, but that's my observation. Um, I, I like the idea where you come up with the communication, then you link it to the questions. Because sometimes I feel that it's not about the quality of the question, but the quality of the communication that raised the questions. That, that's what we call the quality questions. Yes. yes. And I feel that sometimes it may not be just because you ask a good question, then you are a certain smarter somewhere, but more of the communication that is. See, that's the point. You see, you can't say, it, it, I, well, I haven't come up with a communication quote yet. Maybe you can, <laughs> right? But once you start measuring this, you're in a way measuring that, yes. right? Because it's a funnel, you know, 3,000 to 1, maybe 3 million to 1 innovation. Maybe that's how it works, how it has worked in Silicon Valley or, or Haifa or wherever. So, what else is there? Any other yeah, questions? I to, to say something <laughs> about good questions and stupid or dumb questions. I think there's some talk about it. One thing I observe is sometimes the some some really really good questions appear to be dumb at first. You know, people start laughing about know, what stupid question it is, but then when you think about it a bit more, you realize hey, there might be something good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that like the five whys. Right, you know about the five why you keep asking why, 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 why do you say that? Why just eventually get to the root, and it becomes really good. And an another point is, if we only ask questions where we know the answers to, we can't create anything. <laughs> right? To be innovative and creative is you have to ask questions that you don't know the answers to. Sometimes you don't even know that that's a question. Right? Like uh, like Tim Brown from Edio, uh, the creative agency, he said, you know, the before all of this is the questions, knowing what the question to ask is. Right? When you ask the right question, everything falls into place. It becomes easy to solve. When you ask the wrong question, you have to like, keep going back to the right questions. And it's iterative. You know, it has to be. Um, just want to add one comment on, uh, I think, the environment for a good question. A lot of it stems from uh, being in an environment uh, or even a room where people are very diverse. Uh, I'm not sure how diverse uh, we are here, but uh, I guess my, observe is, uh, my observation is, you know, if you have people from different backgrounds, different educational backgrounds, uh, different uh, educational training, um, different ways of life, very different families, different ethnicities, religions, all these things. Uh, you, if you're able to get that kind of group together, uh, the, the quality, that is harder to manage, but the quality of questions are a lot better. And I think uh, one thing that kind of hurts us as a country is that we uh, are too quick to stratify and cluster people who are similar together together. So systematically, we are in this environment where we are surrounded by people who have this like little bubble it's kind of like us, and, and therefore, you know, uh, it goes on to say, it, goes, it makes sense that the questions all kind of come out in a certain flavor, because that's all we're exposed to. Yes, I, I agree, and it's hard. It's, you're, caught, you're talking about cultural, and it has to be a safe place, a safe place to ask questions, right? Um, such that, you know, which is where if an organization has a QQ score, and it's a high one, you know that it's a safe place. Maybe companies, and eventually countries, countries can have a QQ score. You know, so so you, like I, like for instance, I I know that in the UK I could talk about anything, and I did. <laughs> I talk about anything, and I did, and uh, it was really good. It can ask a lot of questions, and and maybe Singapore has to it, it can improve in that in that area, and and having something like this, it could be a small first step. Start thinking about it. Start to push the, you know, the the boundary. So. So in terms of society and how to change it, that's kind of too big. I don't think I can fix that, or anyone can. It's like the discussion just now in the previous session about global warming. There are only so many things that you can do because it's so high level, you know, you can't really help it. Um, so I'm trying to start something small and uh, maybe a score. I mean, the score gets pervasive, who knows, you know. So there are pros and cons, but I think we can swing with the other way. Um, just, just a point to add, so we're talking about communication uh, and what you can talk about. If you look at the, the education system, this is from someone who is talking, who is doing a lot of uh, uh, talks in Singapore and before he went to speak at a school, he was told by the teachers that there are certain topics you can't speak about. So it was like, you can't talk about politics, you can't talk about money, uh, you can't talk about religion, and you can't talk about sex. 
and this kept saying, so what are the other interesting topics I can write? <laughs> this is in school or this is? <laughs> this, is like, this is like university or like, I, I, I don't know exactly, but it was like an education institute in yeah. Singapore which this guy was brought in yeah. and he wanted to like, you know, talk about something interesting. But he can't talk about yeah, it. So yeah. there are times when the constraints. It, I mean, it, it it kind of gets complicated because uh, you know yeah. the, these are the kind of things which are almost interesting to talk about. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, they 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 are emotional topics. They are something which uh, I would say um, accelerate or kind of bring out the <laughs> arguments and you know different point of views. Yeah. Like like what this this person yeah. say here, diversity, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Safe place to ask questions. And the more diverse, the more dangerous, but you get better ideas, better results coming out of that. That's my experience personally right. as well. But the um, you're right, but uh, I have a personal opinion on that, which is you know, once you mix someone thing in a box, they will always think in a box the rest of their lives. The first thing they were thinking about is a box, and that is the worst thing you can have, right? But being where we are is the way it is, right? So, um, so I don't know what to do about that. So, but uh, this is just one small step, you know, having the score, and then the score, I think, you know, pushes both ways. That's as far as I can see. Um, so that's that's what uh, it is. Any other questions? The more, the merrier. <laughs> What is your journey like to kind of come at this? Like, was there a certain thing which sparked your individual? Oh, yeah, like I said in the beginning, uh, I was attending a panel, and uh, you know, the executives were saying Singaporeans, Singaporeans don't ask, don't ask enough questions, and that could be a problem. And this was last month, and there were other articles, and over the last eight years, this has been you know, happening. I've, I've observed, overheard things like that. So, so it's a problem. I, don't, I want to solve the problem, problem solver. So I just. Is it because of the fear of looking stupid? That was covered, yeah. But with this score, you know, it guarantees that you have uh, looked stupid enough times to get a high score. So that's, that's uh, you know, I mean, I, I was like half prepared for this talk. If I look stupid, fine, right? So, but uh, if, if I didn't, fine as well. So, you know. So, okay, uh, thanks very much for the, for the discussion.